I'm going to throw out a question, if I can, to, the, yes. to everyone listening. And I want to know if everyone knows the distinction between those who – see, there's three, there's three parts when it comes to the prophetic. There's those who are called to the office of a prophet. There are those who have the gift of prophecy. And then those who prophesy. There's three parts to it. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul, Paul makes three distinctions. So my question is, does everybody here on the line know what's the difference between a prophet, one who prophesies, or one who has the gift of prophecy? See, people don't realize that it falls into three categories. So again, does everybody understand or does anybody want to know what's the, what's the difference? How do we uh, separate the three? Well, the gift of prophecy is is, is used by moment by moment when you, or especially when somebody say God says you're gonna use him to give a prophecy, it doesn't mean he's a prophet. It just has the prophecy for for a moment of prophecy for the edification of the church and rebuking and so on. And then the other one, the office of the prophet, is like a pastor, an apostle, or a teacher. Is floating in the office of a prophet. So far, that's what I know the difference. All right. Any anyone else? I have a lot of listeners, no takers. <laughs> well, you know, now if you be if God uses you, if God calls you as a prophet, that means that there's a full. Extend God in using you for a purpose to become His voice, and He's gonna do what He has to do, just like you have a like a full time job in the, in the office of a prophet. And there's certain things in your life that be it's gonna be way different than the other. And you're really gonna you're gonna be consecrated. You're gonna be used by God, whatever He's, and you're gonna be led by Him directly. Yeah, I believe Jose is on the right track. He's saying, um, I hear a lot of noise in the background here. Rebuked in Jesus. It's like uh, in the book of Amos, 3 7 says that God won't do nothing unless he reveal to his prophets. So, therefore, you know, he will reveal his prophets, whatever he got, what he has to say, what he's about to do. Or, and also, they have the authority by God, but it's only by God. Is directed by God, not by himself. He's directed by God for whatever God wants him to do and whatever God please wants to, he's to do with his prophet. And, you know, in the Old Testament it speaks about that. You got the major prophet when God used him a whole bunch. And you got the minor prophet where God used certain moments, certain time, but not a long period of time. Amen? And that's, and more or less I can understand it. So help me to do more. Well, that's good. So far, yeah, that's but you see, the thing is this, um, prophets do more, and I said this before, prophets do more than prophesy. Exactly. They, left, they, do, they do, for example, prophets preach, they teach, they cast out devils, they work mm, in miracles, they, they work in miracles, they operate in healing, so they, they, they embrace a lot of other gifts within their office. So that's why it's a distinction between someone, we, like Paul says in First Corinthians, Fourteen one that we all may prophesy. It says, follow after and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. So he wants us all to prophesy. That's that thing that every spiritual believer is encouraged to do. But there are different levels to get to a point of a of a prophet. So like I was mentioning before, they they do more than just prophesy. Because a prophet will give more revelation, not inspiration. Again, a prophet will bring a revelation, not an inspiration. The difference, a revelation is something revealed to him that he gives to a person. And a simple prophecy is a person that's inspired. Like we read in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, verse 3, that Johnny was speaking about for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Those are the simple aspects of prophecy that Paul is saying, I wish you all can do these things. What things? Edify, exhort, and comfort. 
that's things that those are the three parts of prophecy that God wants every believer to step up to the plate and do. So we can Amen. all do that. We can we can all edify, we can all, all comfort, we can all exhort each other within the realm of pro- prophecy. But when it comes to a prophet, he brings revelation. Again, not inspiration, what I just mentioned. He brings a revelation, a revelation of God's heart, of God's mind, what God wants to do. That's why within the re- prophetic office of a prophet, there comes other gifts like word of wisdom and word of knowledge. You see, those are revelation gifts that are imparted to a prophet. A lot of prophets, you'll see they have word of knowledge. What's word of knowledge? Something that's happened today, yesterday. Sometimes I've seen many men of God who have a, a word of knowledge. They're able to tell people even their address, where they live, their name, relatives, where they were at yesterday. You see, a prophet sometimes will get a revelation like that. It comes to their mind. It's like a, a flash. It pops into their mind. It's if you see something. It's like when I was speaking to you that day, brother, uh, I saw somebody knocking on your door. When I said that, when the Lord revealed that, I saw you, I see somebody knocking on your door, if you recall. And that is something, a picture that God put in my mind as I was speaking. So that was a revelation. It comes like a flash. It just, it's just a flash in, into the spirit. And then all of a sudden, it, that shines light on something, and he brings a revelation. He says, boom, there it is. And that's when you say, okay, I see something. I see this. I see that. So a prophet gets revelation from God, from the spirit, and that's why he's able to speak forth what he's hearing or what he's seeing. He's hearing in the spirit. This is what I hear God saying. This is what I see. This is what I see in the spirit. You see? Sometimes they hear it. Sometimes they see it. They don't see it in the natural eye, but they see what? In the spiritual eye. So that is a revelation that a prophet will get. Not like a person that just prophesies when they feel from a, you see, a prophet can prophesy on any occasion. It just comes out of him. Whereas a person that prophesies prophesies, it comes on upon like you were saying, Jose, on an occasion. It just, all of a sudden, they feel like something come upon them, and they just, they just they start to prophesy. There's something that's just inspired. It just comes out of them. And they, they don't do it. They don't do it frequently. They have to be, sometimes they have to get into worship. Sometimes they get into prayer. So they can just get into the realm of that prophetic realm. They have to get into it. Whereas a prophet can just speak to you in a regular conversation, and it just starts flowing out of him. That happens to me when I speak to of people. I just need to talk, and before you know it, I stop prophesying. Not that I'm trying to, but it just comes out. I can't help it, but it just, and I know the difference. I know the difference between my voice, and I know the difference between God's voice. And I know the person who's listening knows the difference, because the person knows me, and they know how different it is when God speaks. See, God has an authoritative voice. He has a, a different type of voice than you have or I have. When he speaks, you can tell it's God, because he has an assurance. He has a, a, a strong presence. You can feel it through the spirit. You can see the manifestation. Even if you could be on a phone call, you can just sense it in the spirit. It goes through the airways. Whereas, again, uh, something that someone is prophesying, eh, okay, we feel it, okay, that's cool, and stuff like that. But when someone, the word of the Lord coming out in a way that you say, wow, that is something, I feel it, I'm trembling. Sometimes people get ministered to and they begin to cry. They begin to weep. They begin to sweat. They begin to shake. They get nervous. Everybody, that's normal because we get really afraid because God is so strong and so mighty and so powerful. When we hear his voice, when we feel his presence, it makes the natural, which are we, our natural bodies, it makes our bodies shake. It makes us quiver. And we get, sometimes we get uncomfortable. Sometimes people who are doing things wrong, they get afraid. They get intimidated. They don't want to be around you. See, that's what the problem with prophets. Sometimes prophets walk alone. You're not going to be sometimes welcome as a prophet. Prophets have to learn how to accept persecution, isolation, being alone. Sometimes all the prophets of old, many of them were alone. Look what one of them wound up in the belly of a fish. That's an example. Sometimes look at Jesus. Jesus was the best prophet that was, and there were times when he was alone. He wasn't always around people. He needed to get alone. You see, prophets do more praying than prophesying. Like I think Johnny was mentioning that a little bit earlier. See, a prophet will pray more than he prophesies. Why? Because he needs to hear from God. He can't reveal what he hasn't heard. Then he's prophesying in the flesh. He's prophesying in his own imaginations, like the Old Testament false prophets. They did that. They prophesied out of the old, all their own imagination. But a true prophet of God is not going to prophesy out of his imagination. He's going to prophesy what? Out of the heart and mind of God. So there are different characteristics of a prophet. Prophets are loyal to God. They're loyal when everybody walks away, the prophet stays. Everybody, when everybody leaves the church, the prophet is there with the pastor. 
because the prophet has a vision. See, churches need prophets. That's the problem. Pastors don't realize that prophets are essential to a congregation because they bring revelation, not just the revealed word of God, but in the inspired, the, the revelation word of God comes upon them, within them, it comes out, and they shift forth a word in due season. It enhances the word. As long as it's not contradicting the word of God, then it's from, it's from God. So prophets are fiercely loyal to God. They love justice. They don't like corrupt people. That's why Jesus was an, an amazing prophet. He didn't like injustice. We, when we read the, the Gospels, we see that he turned over the table in the temple and kicked out the money changers. He whipped out all the animals and all that because what? He loves justice. Prophets don't like injustice. You know those characteristics that prophets, like I said, are alone? They're different. They're, specific, they're just different type of people. Prophets are spheres also. They, do, they dream. They have vision. They, have, they see things. They know things in the spirit. They know things that people don't understand why they know these things. That's how we have the revelation gifts of the word of the wisdom, the word of knowledge. Word of wisdom means they see ahead of things, see things from a, a future perspective. See, prophets don't always predict. People don't realize that. It's just a revelation, something, but it's not a prediction all the time. People think, oh, all you people do is predict. No, prophets don't always predict. Sometimes they speak about things that are going to happen, things that are presently happening that you don't know about, and things that have happened that you probably don't even know about. So they bring revelation in that, in that way. Prophets also hate witchcraft. They hate a Jezebel spirit. Those who control the, they control the church. They manipulate the church. They want to intimidate the church. Those, mm-hmm. are, those, are the, those, are, those are the type of people that prophets hate. You see that in mm-hmm. 1 Kings chapter 18. You see that Jezebel spirit controlling, controlling spirit. Don't you see that in a lot of churches? It doesn't have to be a woman. It could be a male figure who has a Jezebel type of spirit. A Jezebel spirit hates prophets. That's when I say manipulation. You get pastors and elders and you get evangelists. You walk into a church and you tell them you're a prophet, you got problems sometimes. But they don't want that. They don't want they don't want to they don't want you to expose things maybe. Sometimes they don't they're comfortable in what the way they are and the way things are in the church. But prophets can't do that. Prophets change things in churches. They're not comfortable. You get something a prophet to do and he'll change it. He'll change your whole church. I remember going to a church a few years ago and I was the associate pastor and all of a sudden I told the pastor that listen, this gotta go. This got to go. That's got to change. And he's looking at me like I'm crazy. I said, "Listen, this is what God. Wa- this is what God wants to do." I didn't realize what I was doing, but it, after a while, the Lord spoke to me and said, "Yeah, this is what I want done." It's like an apostolic type of anointing, but it's still a well, You're working in a prophetic realm. So prophets don't don't sit still. They go into a church and they start changing things. They'll say, "Man, that guy in the choir, he needs to go because he's in adultery." This one over here playing piano, he's a sin. This girl over there, she's a lesbian. This one over here in the back, he's an usher. He just, he just stole from the, from, the, from the offering bucket. You know, that's what happens with prophets. They go in and they start tearing things up. You know, like I said, prophets are used by God to, re- to release people also, to release people. Like the way Samuel released Saul, the way Samuel released David. Prophets mm-hmm. release people. They put you in your calling. They they gear you to the right direction. They want you to be in your in the way you need to be, where God wants you to be. That's what a prophet will do. A prophet will show you and guide you and encourage you and say, Listen, try this and do this and help you with this and they'll help you gear you in the right direction. Because prophets inspire people. They love preaching, like I said, they love teaching, they love worship. See, if you're if you're a, if you if you're a prophet you, you just don't grow. You're just not born like that. You have to eventually get yourself into that state. You, like Kenneth Hagin talks talk about people who have the gift of just simple prophecy. And you see, you have to be a person that can preach, a person that can teach. Those are the essentials. You can't go on top of that because if you look at the order, you see first you have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Pastor's way is the back. You don't realize that a prophet has a higher office than a pastor. But pastors don't like that. Okay, if okay. you look at the order, look at that order. If you go first, oh, sorry, <laughs> if you just fall out, look at the order. Go ahead, Jose. No, that's a question that I want to know. And in and, and Ephesians, it says, and are built upon foundation of the apostle and prophet, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner. I want to ask you a question. To me, I've been saying a long time, and I want to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. The apostle and the prophet are the biggest one 
than a pastor, an evangelist, and a teacher? Yes or no? Well, those, yeah, see, that's a good question because when you look at it, you have an order there. You see it in order. God gave an order. He, he gave, first he mentioned the apostles. He didn't mention the teacher first. No. He didn't mention the, he didn't mention the pastor first. He didn't no. mention the evangelist first. He mentioned no. the, the, the apostle first, and then the prophet second, and then the evangelist third. I'm not talking about people like to evangelize. I'm talking about your call. That is your gifting. You see many men of God that travel internationally. They have a gift. They have an office. That's their thing. That's their baby. I mean, I can evangelize, but I'm not, a, I'm not a, an evangelist per se. That's not my calling. But I can evangelize. I can witness to people. You can witness to people. You can share Jesus with anybody. We're all called to evangelize, but we're not all called evangelists. You know what I'm saying? Got you. So there, well, there is the order. The order is right there, and we see it. It's in black and white. You just have to yeah, I'm looking at it. it. Exactly, exactly who's who and what order they become. They are in order. So why these people are trying to change knowing is reading here to 20 Ephesians? Apostle, and it's a apostle with an S and prophet. So why are they pushing the path, these, this movement knowing that this is the main of God? Because... Because it's like I said before, it can be like a, a spirit. Sometimes it could be a Jezebel spirit that, that likes to control, manipulate, okay. intimidate. You see? I, I believe that a Jezebel spirit can go for both genders because it's, it's a, a spirit that wants to do what I just mentioned, all the above. So, like I said before, sometimes people will embrace, embrace a prophet. They'll embrace evangelists. They'll welcome an evangelist because they'll help them make their church grow. But a prophet, sometimes you're going to have a problem. Most definitely, yes. <laughs> you're, going have, you're going to have to be a person that's intimidated. I intimidate people. I do. I intimidate people when I go to their churches. Some people don't want to give me the microphone. They don't want to give me the pulpit. Not because I'm wrong, because they're afraid what I might say. So you just...